Today I'm joined by John Mitchell, uh, President of IPC. Nice to see you again, John. Good to see you, Trevor. Yeah, you've had a very busy year. Um, and, you know, and let's start with the obvious one, the, the, the membership. Yeah, so um, we we're very pleased to announce that uh, IPC has continued to grow as it has for its 62-year uh, history now. Mm -hmm. And last year we were actually able to crest 5,000 member locations across the globe. I think it's 5,029 as wow. the end of the year. And uh, the other great thing about that is we continue to become more and more global. 49% mm -hmm. uh, of IPC membership now is outside of the U.S. Really? So. Uh, Again, we're continuing to grow in the U.S., but we're growing faster outside. So, how, of the US. how is that? How is that changing IPC, and how are you dealing with that globalization? So, we have uh, offices pretty much wherever the electronics industry can be found. We've mm -hmm. got offices in China. We have offices in Europe. We have offices in India. Uh, where you would expect to find them, that's where we need to be. Right. I noticed you, you opened an office recently in, in Europe, in, in Brussels. Yes. Um, are you having a lot more interaction with the, the European Parliament? Uh, are we they are. receptive to you? Yeah, so just this last November I was over there working with our, our team that's based there and we had a parliamentary breakfast with them mm -hmm. and we're understanding kind of where many of the environmental issues and, and issues that will affect the industry are going and so, yes, very much so. Uh, we're staying very actively engaged. There. Well, that's really important because, I mean, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, um, had we had that uh, before lead free, lead free and, and, and might have been a different story. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So it's good to see that you're getting ahead of that. Um, China. It's got a few issues at the moment, obviously, uh, some challenges there, but your your, your base is growing. Uh, yeah, we're. Uh, I believe we're at a thousand, over a thousand members in mainland China, mm -hmm. uh, or in our, in PRC, the Public People's Republic of China, and Asia as a whole. I think is approaching twelve hundred overall. So, it like I said, it, uh, we're very pleased with the industry's acceptance and interest in membership here, as they mm -hmm. utilize our standards, our education products, our uh, in advocacy, as you mentioned, in Brussels, as well as uh, in D.C., and uh, a little bit in Beijing as well, mm -hmm. as we try to be aware of whatever is coming down the pike to help the, indus the industry or to impact the industry. We want to be able to keep them informed. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the last area is solutions, where we are working to solve what the industry is facing in terms of challenges. Right. And one of these biggest challenges at the moment is, is, is talent sourcing. Correct. Uh, and, and educating that talent source. And you've got a, a couple of programs, new programs that we you're do. announcing on that. So, um, Work, uh, workforce, the skills gap, mm -hmm. it is, uh, I believe, the number one challenge. As we've surveyed our members, it's consistently the number one thing that we see. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, tried to help it on a few different fronts. We, uh, I'll, let me just share two specific programs that work on. One, for those who are already in the industry, mm. uh, we've, we, as you know, we've been certifying over uh, around 100,000 people every year to the IPC uh, cert, uh, standards. Uh, we're changing, or not changing, we're adding a certificate program that's more focused on specific jobs and the skills required to do those jobs. Okay, so they're, they're not standards-based, they're more process-based? Uh, they're process, it's skills related. Okay. How do you do this? How do you do that? And it'll refer to the standards so you know when mm -hmm. to access them and how to use standards, but it's really how to do whatever it is your job is. If you're uh, a test operator, mm -hmm. how do you do that? If you're just a general operator, what are, what are the things on those? So we're, they're shorter in time frame, and we're working with the industry through our job task analysis committee to make sure that these, what we're developing is actually what the industry needs and wants. So that's one. Okay, and, and so what does that um, bring them? Does that bring them, does that make them uh, keep operators in the industry or does it yeah. attract them to it? So, so when you educate an employee mm. or provide good skills training, make them better at it, first, they're better at their job, so they're more satisfied just from that aspect. Mm -hmm. But additionally, it shows the company's commitment to that employee, so you develop some loyalty along those lines as well. So you really benefit on a couple of different fronts. Right. That's amazing. The, the second area that we're doing is we've, uh, we're announcing officially this week the IPC Education Foundation. Mm -hmm. And this is really working f to find those who are not yet in the industry. It's focused on universities, colleges, as well as even high schools, right. and providing them things like uh, the same type of certificate programs so we can get them the skills and some familiarity with the industry. Because mm -hmm. we have a, a perception issue 
in the industry that we need to overcome for one. Right. Uh, many people think that uh, a manufacturing job or a job in any electronics type of space, obviously that must be a dirty job, but it's not. It's I not. mean, it, it's, uh, I, it's the opposite. It, exactly, it's <laughs> yeah. super clean, it's super high tech. You're working yeah. with robots, you're working with artificial intelligence, additive, additive, it's additive technology. Cool yeah. It's a great place to, to begin a career. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're working on that in, in that regard as well. And then also we're taking these same students and trying to bring them into the factories of IPC members okay. so that they can really see and know that the, not only are the factories clean, but mm -hmm. get to see what it's like to, to experience a day in the life okay. of, if you will. So how, how are you training them in the colleges and the high schools? I mean, are you doing this through... Uh, have, have you got qualified teachers? Have you, are you using video training? What sort of yeah, systems so, are you using? So the answer is yes, all mm. of the above. Right. Um, so uh, on the university side, there are professors that are trying to integrate some of our coursework and some of our materials into their courses that they mm. already have. There are other professors that are teaching brand new and entirely different courses that are unavailable in the college curriculum. Mm -hmm. And the high school front, most of that will be done via online, squirted into uh, classrooms or into after school programs so that students will have access to this. So we're really using multiple modalities in order to meet the needs. Meet the needs. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, you know, the industry is a very healthy industry. It's growing through innovation. It's making a lot of money. And a lot of the people that are involved in it, especially at the top end, um, are quite philanthropic. Um, yes. You've got a new initiative there to, to try and... Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. <laughs> As you share, there are a lot of great things going on in the electronics industry where companies, through their employees, are giving back. Mm -hmm. And so we've started an initiative called IPC Cares. It actually starts this June in, uh, I believe it's the week of June 6th or 9th. Um, I've forgotten the exact date this year, but uh, uh, IPC was founded that week. Okay. And so we're calling, we're, we're calling IPC Cares and we're asking every company that has a, uh, a giving back initiative, whether it's feeding the hungry or uh, you know, picking up litter or whatever it is that you're doing already in your company, we're trying to get them to schedule it that week. Mm -hmm. And then let us know and we will be broadcasting and sharing that through social media, articles, et cetera, because we want to create this awareness that the electronics industry cares right. and that we are actually through our individual and employee efforts giving back to the community. I think it does a couple of other things as well. It also helps to raise awareness of the industry That's right. uh, and also encourages others to take part in, That's right. in the giving. So exactly. Uh, it's a great initiative. Um, you've got a whole bunch of others, but um, what else is new uh, uh, with, with IPC that you really think we should highlight today? Uh, so for today, well, obviously we're, we're here at Apex mm -hmm. Expo, so uh, the show's going great. We're very excited about how that is. So There's a lot of new tech this week. There's a lot of great new tech. We've seen There's some, we're excited about the innovation awards that we'll be awarding tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we had several uh, different uh, contestants share their information, and then we had uh, industry committee review those and make their, you know, they provided scores and provided the things so we could talk about that or mm -hmm. uh, as you said there's a lot going on um, we're just we're just very excited to be uh, the a, a, a significant channel for the industry to help them overcome their challenges and to be even more successful mm -hmm. I mean it's it's a great industry to be part of and to be the trade association for uh, mm -hmm. across the globe because unlike maybe some other industries Pretty sure electronics is going to be around for a while. <laughs> for quite a while, I think. <laughs> yeah. Let me, if I had to pick one, let me pick the automotive initiatives that we have going on. So we okay. were very pleased to, uh, three years ago, we launched our very first automotive-based standard. Mm -hmm. And we had this year, at this event here, we had an automotive forum. We've had uh, committees headed up in Europe by uh, the likes of uh, Continental and Bosch, who yeah. are helping lead the way to overcome as you know, right now, uh, or by 2020, they're saying approximately 50% of the costs of a vehicle will be in electronic systems. Yep. And so we are better suited, having had 60 years in the high reliability space of developing standards and helping our members develop uh, uh, these products, of uh, bringing that same expertise to the automotive industry. And happily, they've been very open to uh, working with us on no, that. No, it's good to hear you're getting ahead of that because, you know, one of the issues we've got and I've brought this up with you before is the fact that tech innovation is happening at a faster rate uh, and standards need sure. to keep up with that. Uh, and, and, and it's a challenge. It is. It is a challenge. So through professional development and things like that, we try to stay ahead of it by bringing the experts to you. Yeah, great. John, it's great to catch up with you again and great to hear about all the new things happening at IPC. Thank you very much, Trevor. Thank you.